Amen. I praise God for willing service. Amen. Amen. Willing to, to lift up the name of Jesus again. Amen. Thank you, Sister Amen. Cullen. Amen. For today's word, we're going to look at the book of Matthew. Uh -huh. In the book of Matthew, there's a scripture in the 21st verse, uh -huh. verses 18 through 22. Uh -huh. Matthew 21, verses 18 through 22. Uh -huh. It says, In the morning, uh -huh. as Jesus was returning to Jerusalem, uh -huh. he was hungry. Yeah. And he noticed a fig tree beside the road. Well, he went over to see if there were any figs on it, but there were only leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. And immediately the fig tree withered up. The disciples were amazed when they saw this and asked, how did the fig tree wither so quickly? Then Jesus told them, I assure you, if you have faith, and don't doubt, mm -hmm. right. you can do things like this and much more. Yeah, okay. That's right. That's right. You can even say to this mountain, uh -huh. may God lift you up and throw you into the sea, and it will happen. Uh -huh. If you believe, yeah. mm -hmm. you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Tyler, today's word is, I thought I could. Uh -huh. I thought uh -huh. I could. Uh -huh. You know, there's so much that we miss out on in uh -huh. the body of Christ because we limit God in our faith. Now, you scholars and you theologians, you really intellectual people, maybe you can help me out. But if the scripture says we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us, uh -huh. why is it that we doubt our ability to do anything uh -huh. that God puts before us? Man, man, all right. Anything that God, if scripture says you can do all things, what makes you think you can't do all things? Amen. Uh -huh. But life can cause us to, to limit God. Uh -huh. Now, I don't suggest that anyone does this, but I'm just going to use it as an analogy, and I know I won't do it because God had not told me to do this. But I, if I look at my speedometer, uh -huh. and it says 140, uh -huh. What makes me think that it can't go 140? Mm -hmm. Now me, I might go as fast as 78. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'm scared when it gets above 80. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Keaton, you don't know nothing about that, do you? Uh -huh. Keaton will try that 140. <laughs> now, but in life, if God says we can reach here, uh -huh, right. why in our minds do we only are we only able to envision ourselves here? Uh -huh. There's something that happens in our psyche, something that happens in the way we think that limits our potential. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. And then we end up performing extremely sub as it relates to our abilities mm -hmm. in Christ. All right. Here in this scripture in verse 18, verse 18 says, In the morning, uh -huh. as Jesus was returning to Jerusalem, he was hungry. Uh -huh. right. uh -huh. Now this was at the beginning <coughs> of the day. Uh -huh. yeah. As Jesus returned to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem represents the church. Uh -huh. 
as Jesus returned to Jerusalem or the church, uh -huh. he was hungry. He, yeah. he felt the void. He, he had a need. Now, now I, I think most people in this ministry by now should understand my philosophy of church, the uh -huh. stuff that we do in these walls. My thoughts are that church is, in essence, a gas station uh -huh. All right. uh -huh. that refuels yeah. and prepares us to function in this world. Uh -huh. All right. uh -huh. All right. Now, some people go to church and just stay all day, all week. But I don't think God intended on it being that way. Folk have families. Folk have lies, folk have things to do. And so my interpretation that the things that we do inside of these walls are things to, to equip us, to refuel us, to re-energize us, and even if there are some repairs that are necessary, uh -huh. that those repairs are done to send us back out into the world. Even when we come and participate in our, in our ministry, whether it's the marriage ministry, the women's ministry, the men's ministry, whatever the, the youth ministry, we, we, we come in and we're prepared, we're filled up, we're re-energized, we're equipped, we're tooled to go back out and do the real work. And that's just my interpretation of, of church. And, uh -huh. and, 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 and as, as I look, no one spends all of their time in the gas station. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I go to the gas station, I go a lot. I go to the gas station, uh -huh. and I get my gas, and I leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't just hang out at the gas station because I got other stuff to do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The gas station is critical. Yeah. I make sure I come because I don't want to run out of gas. When I look at my needle and I see it's low, I, I come and I get refueled and then I go back out to do what it is that I'm doing. Uh -huh. And then once every two weeks, not only do I get my gas, but I, I, I get me a little thing and I, I get 10 cents off a gallon if I get my car washed. Uh -huh. and, so I, and so every two weeks I get, print out my little receipt and go over to the car wash and put my little coat in and then also clean my car up that's taken uh -huh. me now because I need to be able to see out my windshield uh -huh. so that I can uh -huh. get to where I'm going. Amen. Amen. Not everybody just spends all day in the gas station. They go for a critical purpose. Uh -huh. But once they've been refueled, assessed, adjusted, mm -hmm. windshield cleaned, they are to get back on the road. Uh -huh. All right. All right. But at some point, they may run low on fuel or, or some other type of fluid. And it is at that point they will return to the gas station, or as we used to call it, the filling station. Uh -huh. Or the church. The church ought to be the same way. Uh -huh. Folk come and they, they're prepared, they're filled up, they're refueled, they, 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 the things that they need, their vision is cleared up a little bit, and then they have to go out and live their life. Uh -huh. yeah. And then they come back in on a regular basis to, to get filled back up again, to, to be assessed, to make sure, to, to have a mirror put in front of them so they can see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted. Uh -huh. In my opinion, that's how the church ought to be. Uh -huh. Verse 19, it goes on, and, uh, and it says, and, and when he was headed back to the church, to Jerusalem, to get re-energized, uh -huh. get refilled, uh -huh. get prepared to go and do more work, it says he noticed a, a fig tree, and remember it said he was hungry. Uh -huh. he, was, he was hungry. And, yeah. and there are folk that, that come to church because they are they're hungry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's a there's a need yeah. for something. Yeah. Now, now the type of person that, that that I am when when I was a heathen, I was a straight heathen. Amen. I didn't play with Amen. church. I didn't I didn't I didn't bother church. I didn't Amen. come to church. I didn't I didn't talk about the church. Uh -huh. I didn't deal with church. Uh -huh. I, 
I was a heathen. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna play with it. And so I, 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 I didn't come and deal with the church. But there came a time in my life, after about ten years of prodigal son experience, that I was empty. I, I just ran empty. We couldn't fill it. Eight ball couldn't fill it. Jim Beam and Captain Morgan, none of them could fit it. Women, women couldn't fit it. I, there was a boy, and none of the things that I was looking at could fill that boy, but I had enough training up. Parents, that's why it's good to keep bringing the children to church. They'll grow up one day, and they'll go, and they'll try some things, but, but if you put it in them, when they need it, they'll know where to go to get it. And there was a time, a time came when I, I was empty and I, and I remember what mama, grandmama, and grandpa said. Uh -huh, right. They said that Jesus uh -huh. could fix it. Yeah. And so I, I came back to the church because I was hungry and I felt the church should offer me something. Now, from what I knew about the church, the, the church could feel that boy. Jesus was hungry. Uh -huh. He was on his way back to the church. Then he saw a fig tree, something that God made to give people sustenance and, and substance up when they're hungry. All right. And it says that Jesus, he, he saw this fig tree beside the road and he went over to see it. Right. And it says, and, but there were not any figs on the tree. Right. It was just leaves. It looked good. Kind of like some churches do it. Uh, Looks good. Uh, uh, and, but, but there were no figs on the tree. Uh, that, that some kind of like some Christians. Some, some Christians look good. But when people really need a word of encouragement, uh, there are no figs, just a whole bunch of leaves. Uh, These are leaves. This jacket is a leaf. Uh, yeah, this, 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 this tie is a leaf. Uh, uh, the, the, the fact that I can sound like I know Jesus, that's a leaf. Uh, but, but, but people, when they're in need and they're trying to get back and they happen to run into me on the way to trying to get filled up, I ought to be able to give them something to, to help them on their way back to the church. Amen. But it says he looked at the fig tree and there were just no, there were no leaves on the tree. I mean, no figs on the tree, only leaves. He was in need of food or substance. Yeah. But when he took a closer look, he realized that the fig tree looked good at first glance, uh -huh. but had no substance or real ability to meet his need. Uh -huh. Do you, not talking about everybody now, everybody just look in the mirror at yourself. Uh -huh. Do you have what it takes to meet the needs of hungry people? I'm not talking about millions of dollars where uh -huh. you can feed every, but do you have inside of you, Peter, they were walking along the road. Mm -hmm. And as they walked along the road, there was a, a man there begging. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the man looked up to them <laughs> and he stretched out his hand, begging. Uh -huh. Peter said, Silver and gold have we not, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but such as we have, uh -huh. we give unto thee. Take yeah. up your bed and walk. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we don't have the silver and gold, but we got a word inside of us yeah. uh -huh. that can convince a person that was about to commit suicide, Amen. you don't have to go that route. Amen. We have a word inside of us to convince a young lady that, that made a mistake and, 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 and she did some things she shouldn't have done. She ended up pregnant, but she was about to go and get an abortion. And, 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 but we have something inside of us that says, baby, you don't have to do it. Amen. Got real quiet on that. Amen. If God created the life, All right. All right. who are we to take the life? Amen. We can't determine what God can do with that life. There are options if we don't want to raise that child, but what right do we have to kill that child? Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Are you someone that can meet the need? Uh 
Uh-huh. Young man come to you that's hurting. Uh-huh. Had difficulties in his life. Yeah. Right. History is making mistakes, suffering the consequences, yeah. Yeah. getting another chance, making mistakes, uh -huh. suffering the consequences, getting a, a just a vicious cycle. Uh -huh. And he comes to you and just need somebody to talk to. Uh -huh. Do you have inside of you what he needs? Uh -huh. Something to fill that void, something to fill that empty. The boy is hungry. Uh -huh. All right. The woman is hungry. Uh -huh. Is there something inside of you that can meet that? There was nothing in that fig tree. Yeah. It would just leaves. It uh -huh. looked like a fig tree, yeah. All right. but couldn't encourage anyone to go on. Uh -huh. Jesus was so disappointed with them. Disappointed in this thing that, that was created for a certain purpose, uh -huh. but for whatever reason was not fulfilling its purpose. Uh -huh. That he cursed it to never bear fruit again. Amen. You ever heard that story about the, the talents? Yeah. It said uh -huh. the master that he went away uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then there were some people that he, he left in charge of the things that he had stewardship over and, uh -huh. and, and he said he gave one one talent, gave uh -huh. another one three, and gave uh -huh. another one five. And, uh -huh. and it said that when he returned and he, he went to the one that had five, and uh -huh. the one that five had multiplied, had doubled what what he what God what the master had given him. And then uh -huh. the one that had three doubled what the master had given. But uh -huh. the one that had one said, you know, I was so I know that you're real serious yeah. about your uh -huh. money. Uh -huh. He said, so what I did, I didn't want to lose it. Uh -huh. And so I just went and buried it so it could be saved. Uh -huh. So the master looked at it and said, you are worthless. Uh -huh. He took what he had. Uh -huh. right. Some of us will look at what we have and because it don't look like much, we won't use it. Uh -huh. Because you can't say as good as the next one, you won't open your mouth. Uh -huh. Because you can't speak as, 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 you can't sound as intelligent as someone else when you speak. You won't open your uh -huh. mouth. Because you're not fasting, because you're not as this or as that, you won't even do the little bit you can. Uh -huh. Some of us are that way. And Jesus yeah. said that Jesus took it from the one uh -huh. and gave it to the one that did something with it. God has put something in each and every one of us. I don't care who you are. Amen. I don't care what kind of past you have. I don't care what kind of history you have. There's something on the inside of you that can meet the needs of others. Uh -huh. Amen. I don't care your background, I don't care your family history, I don't, not, not a bad yet. God has put something inside of each and every one of us that can meet the needs of someone else. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And Jesus was so disappointed with what he had that this, this big tree was created to be substance. Uh -huh. And it only had leaves. And Jesus was so disappointed that he cursed it to never bear fruit again. That really gives a deeper meaning to 2 Timothy 4 and 2. They said that admonishes us to be instant in season uh -huh. and out of season. You got to be ready. You, you don't have time to say, I'm not ready. I don't feel like it. I, I need a little notice. I, so because I didn't tell her this morning I need her to say with, sing with me. I don't really tell anybody. It's just whoever God puts on my heart when I step up here. And if God has blessed you, go ahead and do it. Sister Color told me afterwards, she said, she said, no, Pastor, I started out too high and wrong. Don't worry about that, sister. You let God use you and God was glorified. God said, I don't care about how, how, how I don't care about how it looks compared to somebody else. I just want you to be willing to step on the water. Amen. The scripture right here says that he was so disappointed, he cursed it to never bear fruit again. And then uh -huh. in verse 20, the disciples were amazed. Uh -huh. Come back one for me. Verse 20, the disciples were amazed uh -huh. when they saw this and asked, how did the fig tree wither so quickly? Uh -huh. Now I want you to catch something here. The disciples were amazed, not because the, tea, the fig tree withered, uh -huh. but because it withered so quickly. Uh -huh. They knew that the word of God had power. Yeah. They knew that the word of God could do, but they doubted how quickly God's word could move. They doubted how quickly God's word could make a difference. And many of us today, we, we know that God has power. We, we know that God can do, can do the miraculous. And, and we even know that God can use us. But sometimes we limit the abilities of God. Sometimes we limit the powers of God. And the disciples realized we knew that Jesus could do it. But how did you do it 
so quickly, Jesus. God, I know you can heal cancer, All right. but how could you heal my cancer? Uh -huh. God, I know that you can transform and change lives, but how could you change my life? God, I know that you can cause give a difference in someone's life, God. But how could you do it so quickly, God? God, I was a mess. I was a wretch undone. I was not worthy to even step in the church, God. But not only did you invite me in, God, you, you called me to preach your gospel, God. You moved me up quickly, God. How did you, did you do it through me, God? God says he can do all things. Uh, is it? Transform that liar for him. 
want your help. I do not full of toys. I pull cars full of hair logs. I pull big trucks. I have no time for the likes of you. And away puffed on the big strong engine without another word. There's some church folk that's so deep. They think what you ain't going to move on, what you going through.
Stand to your feet. You can do it. 